do verse. Um, I'm thinking uh, most of you probably watched uh, the previous videos to this um, that shows uh, this machine running. Uh, there's schematics on some of the earlier videos. Uh, what I wanted to do was go ahead and tear this thing down. Um, I want to do a little bit different configuration for a final test before I build my bigger, better model. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and take this top cross brace off. of this cross brace which there's one of these bearings that looks like this on there and it's got a couple little allen screws that attach it to the shaft which is not the easiest thing in the world to get to not going to cut this video because um, I don't want anybody uh, questioning any of this. So if you get bored, just fast forward. Okay, so that's loose. I see the chaff drop down there. I'm going to put my little Allen wrench up this time so I don't have to hunt for it for an hour. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this thing off. Uh, um, the reed switch uh, did stop working on this, so after about four days of running, uh, we had to re <laughs> we'll need to replace this reed switch. So we'll pull this thing off. So, anyways, it's a piece of wood with a bearing screwed to it. That's all there is to it. Okay, so this rotor here, which is falling down because I took the bearing off, um, has magnets in it, which I, I think these are like, uh, I don't know what the measurements are, let's measure one. Uh, about three quarters by one inch roughly. And I believe those are probably N42s. They're strong, but I don't think they're as strong as the N52 magnets that I have. These washers, their, their only uh, uh, reason for being on there was um, to keep these magnets from falling through the holes because I didn't want to glue them in, obviously, as I'm changing uh, uh, setups and experiments as I go. So, anyways, we're going to, go ahead and pull these out of there so they don't uh, come flying out at an inopportune time. Yeah, we got one that does not want to come out, so we'll just leave it for now. Okay, so I've got those out of the way. Um, now underneath, we have a second rotor. Uh, I need to find an Allen wrench for this one. So we can go ahead and get that apart. Hopefully I have something handy and this won't. Just hopefully one of these fits it. Yeah, it looks like everything I got is going to be too big. Yeah, sorry, you can always 
fast forward again I'm not going to catch the video Of there you can see the coils this thing take that last magnet out there so it's just a uh, got a clamp on it hold it under the shaft uh, I did cut these with CNC so these are really precise this way not so much that way so let's move this aside here let me get this other magnet up here So, um, just a closer look at the top of these, or top of this coil, or coil set I should say, and this is set one, which is these two, wired to these two on the other side, just like the diagram on an earlier video shows, our read switch up here. Um, which has stopped working. So, um, I'll get this set back up here. And we'll go ahead and just turn the rest of this down. Okay, let's unhook the voltmeter, which is the red and the black wire. Uh, should be all the same equipment as so on that I used in the earlier videos. So, there's our voltmeter unhooked. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on the bolts um, and our battery, which is the green and the yellow, which I will leave hooked up. On the other end, I'll just go ahead and take the battery loose. So we'll set this over here and we'll go ahead and tilt this thing up here on one of these capacitors. Okay, so this thing is not even attached to this bottom plate. I got tired of taking it off and on. So our capacitor, you can see this was our battery coming in, positive, negative, and our battery our capacitors bank positive, negative. So that was all hooked together. So let's take that loose. There's our capacitor. Again, these were here. I have a loose one here. That is the capacitor whoop, upside down. That is the capacitor that I used. still enough. I hate it when people make videos and they're flashing and moving the camera around so fast and you only get to see things for a split second and then uh, you don't get to read it and so on. So anyways we'll set the capacitors aside here. Back over there. And we'll pull this bottom plate loose here. Which uh, looks like the shaft is going to come with it. Okay, so this is just nothing but a wooden plate with a bearing on it. You can see my CNC failed on me halfway through the cut, so we uh, cut a second time. But our uh, um, point of uh, our home point got changed, so we end up with a, a little doubled up uh, double vision there on our CNC cut. But it works fine just on the bottom of it. Now we're going to set this over here out of the way. Okay, so this was the bottom rotor. And um, I'm going to put a mark on this so you can see that this was uh, not, this is only magnet, was only magnetically 
coupled in the last video. I've had it both ways. In the last video, uh, it was only magnetically coupled to the uh, uh, to the rotor on top. So you can see the shaft is not turning. Um, these were set opposing to the um, rotor on top. So. Um, and on the bottom, we have another one of those little bearings, a uh, CNC 3D printer. So, and this having magnets, I'm going to find a better place for it so that it doesn't grab onto anything else. Okay, so this is our reed. This is our reed switch. So our circuit comes in. If everything's falling apart here, and I know my work is uh, not the prettiest in the world, that's for sure. But it was functional for what I needed to do. So, anyways, our positive comes in right here on these two blue wires from the battery. And this was hooked to the battery as well as the um, capacitor banks. This side goes to where the AC output from the inductor coils would be, which is where the pulse goes in. And this one comes back from the DC charge side of the um, rectifiers, which I just broke. No big deal. We'll solder that back on later. So, um, I've got these taped over. You can see I uh, hooked all the positives together here. And then each uh, AC is in the middle here. And then you'll see the furthest uh, leg on each set to the... Uh, well, this whole thing's falling apart on me. Uh, that should have been hooked to the AC. Um, <laughs> And the farthest one to the right on each one of these uh, is the uh, negative, which is under this black tape, your negative rail, your DC negative rail. Okay, so anyways, that's got the positive input output. Uh, let's put that there. Um, okay, each coil set, each closed loop goes to the AC on its own rectifier or its own phase. Okay, your ground. This was hooked to the battery as well as hooked to the uh, capacitor negative. This goes up through the reed switch, which I'm just going to go ahead and snip this off. Maybe. And then the white comes from the this one goes to the DC rail of the um, output from the inductors the DC output I think I said I'm not sure if I said DC or AC there this goes up through a reed switch back down and into the AC side for the pulse it also has a capacitor so pull this reed switch out here It had, or not a capacitor, but a, a diode. And I don't know if you can see the direction of that diode. So, anyways, that goes uh, into the DC for the pulse. That is only, which this is only pulsed with the DC when the. Uh, Read switch is activated, uh, which I'm gonna have to use whole sensors because those read switches they they hold up. I think six days is the longest that this thing ran on one of the read switches. Uh, and you can see the wiring just like the schematics in the earlier videos. Um, this is a watt meter that uh, I uh, was using for a while. I'm gonna have to get some. Uh, glue uh, release to put on that for the suit. It's super glued to the board. Let's get our cable off here. It's just an, 
the other jumper cable. And that's really all there is to this thing. Um, so what I, what I would like to see people do is, these are all sewing machine bobbins. And these are wound, I don't know how many turns. They're filled with 32 gauge magnet wire. Which is very hard to solder, by the way. And on each of these sets of coils, again, just like the blueprint, we'll do this on coil set one here, um, which is the one, even though the pulse is up here, coil set one is the one that I was pulsing. Um, so this this is the goes from the start to the finish, and those are hooked together. And then this would be start to finish, and these are uh, hooked together. Okay, these coils are wound. So we can get this right here. Okay, they they are wound opposite, and uh, I don't know what the uh, winding direction is exactly. To be honest with you now. I'm looking at it from this angle because I'm not sure if I, from the top or the bottom, but uh, anyways, one is wound one direction and one is wound the other direction. Um, this one would be wound, let's see, the same direction on the op opposing side, and this one would be wound the same direction on the opposing side. And then this is actually hooked to, okay, S for start, F for finish. Um, and these are actually hooked start to start, finish to finish, from side to side. It's this closed loop coil system, I believe, is why this thing works. Um, also, you have because I only had six magnets, as you noticed, above. When this thing fires, that magnet is somewhere over top of, or just past dead center of coil one, which is a repulsion to the magnet. And depending on which direction it's going, obviously. And when, th when that fires or um, uh, induces current into these inductors, this one becomes a push, and this one becomes a pull. So, anyways, um, and then there's no magnet over top of this coil set, or this coil set. Uh, just the same coil set on either side each time it fires. Anyways, that, that's one of the many configurations, and probably the mo one I used the most. Um, other than that, um, use some wood. Uh, CNC router to cut out the patterns to try to get some uh, precision there. Um, mounted a little board here to put my reed switch in, which I've had that thing mounted all over the place. Um, another look at the bottom here. So there you have it. Um, that's the whole machine. Pretty simple. Um, why no one else has thought of this um, design uh, in the hundreds of years? People have been trying to uh, do the uh, free energy or over unity thing, uh, but I believe this is the answer. Um, I don't believe it's disputable. I've charged several batteries. I have to change the batteries uh, so they don't. Uh, overcharge um, I, I'm looking for guys um, uh, which forgive me if I mispronounce your name but George Chinakis uh, Laser Saber Lid Motor Tin Man all you guys that have done all this uh, um, tinkering I, I guess you call it um, research uh, you, it's guys like you um, that can do uh, improve upon this thing. Um, 
I think that uh, it, it definitely uh, can be improved upon. Um, but I don't want to see... One of the things I really notice uh, on YouTube is people are copycats and people copy you know from one design to, to theirs and uh, they keep duplicating the same mistakes don't copy my design don't go out and, and get the same size wire and the same you know think about it change it up a little bit build it bigger build it better and let's perfect this thing and let's change this planet Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I'm trying to uh, raise some extra funds to uh, help me uh, um, be able to fund some more of this research. I am working on a bigger unit. Um, magnet wire is very expensive, and when you do the bigger units, uh, it takes a lot of magnet wire. Um, so, anyways, if you would subscribe, that would tremendously. I thank you very much for watching.